this is Andrew from TS for Tech, and today I'm taking a look at a mini PC from a company called Ace Magician. So you can check these guys out online. Uh, they make a lot of different mini PCs and sell them on Amazon and their website. This specific model is the TK11. So TK11, it's uh, gray in color, and this is the 16 gigabyte uh, RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD. Obviously, uh, I'm in the US, so this is the US spec. But yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this, give you a little bit of information about uh, the PC specs, you know, what comes in the box, and then as with other mini PC reviews I've done in the past, I'll go ahead and set it up, uh, install some screen recording software, and do some tests, right? So we'll do kind of basically an SSD speed test, we'll do Geekbench scores, we'll do some gameplay and uh, you know, like things like Fortnite or something like that, just to kind of see how it plays uh, games, casual games. Obviously, this is not a gaming computer, but you know, just to demonstrate the capacity of, uh, of the machine to do light gaming and basic office tasks, kind of act as a business desktop computer scenario. So, I've got to open this up. I already took the plastic off, but so this is how it comes. It's a little manual, user manual. Basically not a lot of information here, but you know, kind of just gives a little bit of basic info. And then the computer is here. Pull that out. And then you get some other stuff here in the bottom of the box. So you do get, uh, obviously, a power adapter. This is US spec plug. So this plugs into the power brick, which is here. This is a, about a 65 watt power supply. That's how it connects to the computer, the barrel jack. You also get HDMI cable and a VESA mount adapter and a couple screws. So this will come in handy if you wanna mount this to the back of your monitor and your monitor has a VESA mount. Um, you can hide this behind the monitor and kinda of keep it uh, nice and clean by installing that. And we'll go ahead and open this up. How the heck do I do this? Uh, so as you can see, this is the kind of like, almost like a space gray color. You see on the top, this is the fingerprint reader slash power button. Basically has some stickers on there, basically Intel, uh, WhatsApp customer service if you need help from, from Ace Magician. On the front, you have an audio jack, you have, you have two USB ports, I believe that is a microphone. And then you have a, a USB-C Thunderbolt connector. So this is a Thunderbolt 4, uh, supports up to 40 gigabytes per second. If you look in the bottom, you can see it's a little rubber feet. Here's the VESA mount screw holes, some uh, venting for the fans and for the cooling. Same thing along the top there. If you can see there's some venting for the cooling. You can actually see inside and look the copper fins of the cooling um, mechanism there. Then on the back, two additional USB 3 uh, connectors, HDMI display port, you have a LAN connection. This is a gigabit LAN, Kensington lock slot, and the power connection. So fairly minimal on the actual device, right? So you end up with having uh, four USB three ports and then the front USB-C. So plenty of ways to connect peripherals to this device, etc. So this is an Intel Core i7. It's the 11390H processor. So that's a Tiger Lake processor. Uh, features up to five gigahertz turbo speed with a 3.4 gigahertz base speed. And in that processor, uh, you end up getting four cores with eight threads. Uh, this also has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, 
a 512 gigabyte uh, SSD, which is an M2 2280. That sports uh, 8K ultra high def. And the graphics in this is the Intel Iris XE. So obviously not discrete graphics card built into the processor, but it is the Intel Iris XE, which is pretty, uh, it should be pretty adequate for light gaming, you know, kind of casual games, that sort of thing. It's not going to be a powerhouse that's going to give you, you know, amazing graphical performance, but should be more than enough for most folks. Uh, this does feature a built-in speaker as well. Uh, like I said, it has a fingerprint scanner here. Uh, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5, comes loaded with Windows 11 Pro, and can support three uh, displays, right, at the same time. So you'd have to use the HDMI, the Display Port, and uh, the front USB-C to get all three displays, but you can run triple displays with this. So I will go ahead and take off the bottom of this so we can take a peek inside. It's just a small Phillips head screw. As you can see, I can just unscrew those. Uh, they're just short uh, machine screws. And then pull off the bottom and then you can see on the inside what is there, right? So you do have an SSD. I don't know the brand because it does have a heat sink on it. Uh, which is nice, I guess. So they do put a heat sink on the M2 SSD. And this is, like I said, 512 gigabytes. And then for the RAM, um, this is Kim Tigo RAM. So this is two sticks of eight gigabytes. So a total of uh, 16 gigs. So you could put up to 32 gigs in there because it will support, you know, two 16 gigabyte RAM modules. This is the speaker here on the bottom and then and this is the SSD slot connector so if you want to add an SSD it mounts right here in the bottom of the PC and then you use the connector to obviously connect it so not really much going on on the inside I don't really want to take um, this other cover plate off because I don't know if it's gonna break anything it doesn't look like it will fit around the SSD but yeah, basically it is user accessible, right? So four screws, you can get inside, you can change the RAM, you can change the SSD if you want. You can add the additional, you know, the additional hard drive up to two terabytes it supports uh, for that internal SSD. Pretty nice, compact. I mean, obviously it's all plastic, but it feels well made. Doesn't feel flimsy or anything like that. So I'll go ahead and put this bottom back on. And then we will jump over and do some testing. Okay, so that just screws back on. And like I said, there's the two, uh, two holes if you want to mount this. If you, want to, if you want to mount the VESA adapter, and then you can mount it. So pretty simple to do. Yeah, overall, uh, looks really nice. Nice and compact, not too bulky or heavy. And seems like it has plenty of airflow ability with the different slots and, and whatnot. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump over and show you the actual computer. I'll do some screen recording of this. We'll go through, do some speed tests. Uh, like I said, load a game or two with some uh, overlays to see what the frames per second you're getting and all that sort of thing. And basically, you know, give this thing a little run and see how it performs. So we'll jump over and do that. So here I just uh, am screen recording the desktop and went into the about uh, for the system. And you can see that it is registering as the Core i7-113990H at 3.4 gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM, has Windows 11 Pro. Uh, the one thing I note, it was installed on 6.13.2022 which is, I guess, I'm not really sure how that works. If it's, is that when this PC was built or uh, the image version of, of uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure how that works on Windows, more of a Mac guy. And then there are obviously then a lot of Windows updates that need to be applied. 
can go into the Intel graphics command center and just take a look at the Iris XE uh, graphics settings and information uh, around the, the built-in graphics. As you can see here, I believe in the system, if you go under GPU, yeah, it gives you the information about the driver, shader versions, DirectX versions and all of that, and some overall information. Here I'm running a crystal disk mark on the internal SSD, the C drive, and I'll just let, I think I let this run a little bit and then I'll skip ahead to the end. But gets decent uh, read and write speeds comparatively, I think, to other, uh, you know, other, other machines that have internal SSDs or the M2 NVMEs. So this I think is actually pretty good overall. So like I said, pretty respectable numbers here uh, across the board. Then I ran uh, Geekbench 6, both the CPU and then the GPU benchmarks. And the CPU obviously takes a little time to run. I'll skip ahead. So you get a single core score of 1962 and a multi-core score of 5842. Again, you can scroll down, see the single core performance across the different tests, as well as the multi-core performance across the different tests as well. So for a desktop CPU, uh, this is actually pretty good, I think, overall. And then I went and ran the GPU benchmark, and likewise, it takes a while to run. And then you get an open seal score of 10,550. And again, you know, the, the individual performance scores across the different tests that it does for the open CL. Now for the user benchmark for pcbenchmark.com, I ran this twice. And actually, I observed a pretty big difference in the performance when I was using the screen recorder to record it. So um, while I show the screen recorder running here uh, to get this, I'm going to skip ahead and show you the results of it when I ran it without the background you know, stuff going on. So it did turn out a little bit better. Still, not the best from a gaming performance perspective. So desktop is really good. You know, as a workstation, it really it comes down to the graphics, right? So the graphics score is below average, you know, can hold, basically says it can handle older games, so it's going to struggle with anything new. And then here's the, you know, comparative, six, you know, percentiles of where uh, it, the, the computer ran in the processor and graphic card area. So, I mean, overall, nothing to write home about, but... Respectable performance for just a regular desktop experience. And then here I did load up uh, Fortnite on the machine. And this is just, I think I had this capped at uh, 60 frames a second. I just set the settings at low 60 frames a second and uh, installed FPS monitor just so I can get some of the information up on the left hand screen. Left hand top, left hand of the uh, of the gameplay. So you can take a look at that while this is going on, and it's generally it's pretty slow <laughs> from a F, uh, frames per second standpoint. But the game, once you're in it and you're kind of going along, it's playable, right? Um, on, and I'll show a few different settings as this as this progresses a little bit. But I mean, uh, this is 19, uh, 1080, right? So 1920 by 1080, and it's it's playable, you know, at this level. I really can't go any uh, any larger up on the resolution because it just will not perform at all. This is running on a 4K monitor. I have an LG 4K 43-inch monitor, so I'm just playing this in a window at 1080p. Uh, 
I don't know what that guy was doing. <laughs> so I totally missed him. So I'll skip ahead. I think I changed the settings uh, in a little bit after this, and then we'll see how those turn out. So here I just took off the frames per second cap just to see what it would do if I left it at unlimited. And then I changed the view distance and the texture to medium quality.
And to be honest, I really don't know what I'm doing here. Probably gonna get killed, but just kind of playing around, just trying to do some destruction with different vehicles to see, you know, how that affects the gameplay. And it's actually pretty smooth so far, you know, with the settings that I had uh, from the graphics for this. So uh, overall, very playable. Uh, you know, if you're not looking for top tier, super high, you know, settings and all that, and you just want to play, you know, decently, maybe this is for your kid, maybe this is for, you know, teenager, you don't want to spend a ton of money on a giant gaming rig and all of that, and they need something to do homework and, you know, browse the internet and whatnot, as well as play some games like this, this definitely is something you might want to take a look at. It, it definitely will work for this use case. So overall, I think this is a really great option if you're looking for something with a Intel processor, Intel graphics in a mini PC form factor that you know supports up to 32 gigs of RAM, M2 SSD, all of that stuff. It's, this is a really compelling package uh, and gives you a, kind of the best of both worlds. You can use it as a productivity machine as well as do some light gaming. This is Andrew from TS for Tech. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.